World Art Foundations presents the Rupert Museum in Stellenbosch, South Africa. An interview with Theon Herschelman. From its beginning, in 2005, the Rupert Museum was a landmark for 20th century South African art. Can you explain its success? The success mainly comes from the fact that uh, Dr. and Mrs. Rupert's uh, collection, which they started in 1940, and they collected till 2005. And because the two of them had a very good eye for uh, good art, for quality art, uh, they managed to bring together a, a collection of South African work and some of the best works by different artists um, through those years and from that period. Uh, those works are of course, a selection of those works are of course now uh, on exhibition here at the Rupert Museum. And uh, you are the director of this museum from the start and much longer involved in the whole process. Can you tell us what makes the collection of the museum so special? Yes, the, uh, as we've uh, discussed the South African collection or the South African part of the collection, uh, you know that includes uh, artworks by Emma Stan, uh, John Bell, Cecil Hicks, Maggie Loebscher, sculptures by Van Vaux, uh, sculptures by Lucas Sotole, Esram Lachai, uh, which were basically the most important uh, artists uh, during that period. But they did not only collect uh, South African art, they also collect uh, a lot of international art, uh, art sculptures of uh, Rodin, his contemporaries. They collected uh, uh, quite a lot of Italian art and paint, uh, sculptures and paintings. Uh, other international artists like uh, uh, Keta Kollwitz, uh, which was German as you know, and then also uh, a huge collection of uh, French tapestries by uh, Jean Lussard and uh, his contemporaries. Now all these artworks in the collection, of course, we, we can have them on exhibition here as well. And from time to time we do have them here. Mrs. Uh, Rupert uh, was born in Krugersdorp and she studied art uh, at Potchefstroom University. She then later met her husband, uh, Anton Rupert, at the Pretoria University. Uh, they then later moved to Stellenbosch, they got married, and soon after that uh, started uh, collecting uh, art. Uh, Mrs. Rupert really uh, loves the art. She, also, she was also very much into music and also theatre. The whole idea of the museum came after a fire scare at their private home here in Stellenbosch. She then decided that there must be a museum built where they can look after their collection and also uh, the, the, the artworks will then be accessible to the, to the public and open to the public to come and enjoy. So she appointed then uh, Hannes Mayron a local uh, architect and also artist, uh, to design the building. Uh, uh, she told him that she wanted a building that looks as it belongs on a farm. Uh, yeah, a building in the farm cape architecture style. Uh, we know that they had many fights about the building and how big it should be. And, uh, but eventually uh, they started building in 2003 and the museum opened its doors in 2005. It's about 2,000 square meters big and uh, have four uh, main exhibition areas. Mrs. Rupert saw the museum open. She, the last time she was here, was in October, beginning of October 2005. And as you know, she passed away on the 30th of October that same year. Dr. Rupert followed uh, three months later in January 2006. Huberta and her husband Anton were avid collectors from the 40s until the 70s of African artists, to name the two most famous, Pierre Neve and Irma Stern. 
Many artists were their contemporaries, which lead to the question, did they knew the artist personally? And can you tell us something about how the collection was built? Yes, they, are, they, they bought from auctions, uh, they bought from other private collectors. But a lot of the important artists of that period were actually living in the Western Cape. And they knew them all well. Artists like Irma Stern, uh, John Beltz, Cecil Higgs, Maggie Loebscher. Um, they, were, they were friends and uh, they bought direct from them. A very good example is the uh, internal child that Irma Stern painted in 1916. Uh, Irma kept it in her private collection throughout her life. But Mrs. Rupert always asked her that, uh, you know, one day when you uh, decide to sell the painting, uh, you, you, I want you to sell it to me. And then in 1965, a year before Irma Stern passed away, she sold it to Mrs. Rupert. So that's part of our collection and it's such an important painting and Dr. Rupert loved the painting very much. It was in his office for many years before we brought it to the museum. And what are the plans for the future in this museum? What exhibitions are ahead and is the museum still collecting? And in what direction? Can you tell us? Yes, uh, uh, you know, in the past we had some, uh, some uh, lovely exhibitions here. We, we had the Roda exhibition here. Uh, we had some other exhibitions by South African artists that we invited. Uh, the plans for the near future is that we're going to bring in some more sculptures by, by Keto Kolvitz and some drawings. And uh, in the passage area we're going to have an exhibition of sculptures by uh, Antoine Bordel, in total 22 of them, that will all come out of our own collection. And then in the uh, one exhibition, large exhibition area, uh, we are going to have the larger paintings and larger works on paper uh, on exhibition, which is the moment on storage. And can you tell us some names of those artists? Well, yes, William Kentridge, uh, uh, Penny Siopas, um, many more. Yeah, more the contemporary. More, more contemporary, bought, 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 I would say bought in, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but they're all large, large canvases and, and, and also sculpture work of course as well. Thank you very much.